scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I may not know how the solution will come. I may not know what to do. I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I began a journey to start a business and now I'm in debt to the millions and the billions. I, it was because of my desire to go to the other side, the other side of my destiny. I can't remain at this level for the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. There are many people who do not have storms. It's not necessarily a proof of spirituality. It's proof that they are so cowardly they don't have the courage to go to the other side. Are we learning now? It takes courage. A storm must, must be sure that you are worth its attention to come to you. Now, learn this lesson. Number one, storms happen to all men including jesus it is not unusual one of the scriptures that baffled me for many years is this statement in revelation and there was war in heaven war in heaven heaven is your throne with the all-seeing eye omniscient omnipresent there was still war in heaven Notice the character of God in both cases. God never stood up from his throne because of the war. He was still seated at rest. There was already a system put in place. Listen, learn this. Rest is proof of faith. Rest is proof of faith. You may need to prophesy to yourself. Say, myself, find rest. Myself, find rest. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city, said the watchmen watch it, but in vain. It is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. But he gives his beloved sleep. Are we together? So there is a mentality that was in Jesus that I'm proposing to us. Every time you seem to not have control over the issues in your life, forget about the issues and verify in that boat, is Jesus there? He can be there as the prophetic word he gave you. He can be there as the word of God that you hold on to. Are we together now? Yes. This home now it's three years five years six years we're trusting god for children and it looks like children are not forthcoming that is a storm it was a desire to raise a generation of prophets and apostles who will frontier the kingdom now a storm has come and all kinds of naysayers will be around you trying to discourage you to say go back remember what i told you the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue jesus had a mentality he was so at rest and they tapped him and said master carest thou not that we perish please give us the scripture verse that will be verse 23 or 24 luke chapter 8 verse 23 or 24 luke chapter 8 
Master, he says, carest thou not that we perish? And the Bible says, do you know? The Bible says, verse 24 is the verse. And they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose. Jesus never told them one word until the storm was over. He didn't say, gentlemen, how are you just become? No, he turned to the wind. Not the water. Jesus addresses storms by starting with the wind. The spirit, the force from the realm of the spirit that brings that storm. And he said, peace, another synoptic account says, be still. And there was a great calm. And then he now turned to the people and said, now that I'm done with the storm, let me teach you something. Where is your faith? He turns to the wind. Like someone is going to turn to the wind this night. That it is time for me to move forward. And thou storm that is standing before me, manipulating things, acting as though it's a financial problem, acting as though it's a marriage problem, acting as though it's a health problem. Just when they say you are about to be promoted, you touch yourself and it looks like there is a growth somewhere and the devil starts telling you cancer. So this is how you are going to die. That is a storm. It is not the swelling. There is a spirit. There is a way that we deal with storms. Jesus is giving us a lecture that you deal with storms by rebuking the wind. You only rebuke what is alive. You don't rebuke what is dead. That means the wind had life and it could hear the force that is behind the tragedy the force that is behind that is causing an impedance to your journey can hear and if you know how to speak as a priest that storm can be calm you don't have to bother about the water let the wind seize its influence and the water will come back to normal. So the issue is not just a financial problem. The issue is not just a marital problem. The issue is not just job. The issue is not just your destiny help us forgetting you. There is wind that is making the water to be boisterous. But imagine the labor they would have gone through. Trying to look for a container to fetch the water out. One by one one imagine you're trying to fetch it out and it's coming into the boat again it would have killed them there that's how many of us try to manage challenges now jesus is teaching us a lesson here that for every storm please pay attention there is wind and there is water and that you can stand in the name of jesus christ and take authority over the wind and you go to your office by the next day and the same boss who vowed that you must leave this office comes to you and says you know i've been thinking about you where did you say you come from? and now you know that that is water without the influence of the wind now are we together now verse 25 jesus said to them verse 25 now where is your faith we we'll continue our reading and being afraid they wondered saying to one another i'm reading from kjv what manner of man is this for he commanded even the winds and water and they obey him the bible now says they proceeded with their journey verse 26 the bible says and they arrived say i must arrive oh in spite of the storm the bible says they arrived just stop there don't rush we are dealing with this is scripture this is good news that regardless what they met on the way the final thing is that they and i prospered and i went forward your story is not complete until this is captured in the glory so when you are telling me about the challenges i'm interested but not as interested as this i want to know did you have the staying power to arrive someone prophesy say i arrive 
Say, I arrive. Hallelujah. I arrive financially. That, that destination, I arrive in the name of Jesus. You may laugh at me because you are watching the storm, but it's not over. I arrive in the name of Jesus. I arrive. I arrive. Regardless the naysayers, I arrive by the power of the Holy Spirit. In ministry, I make progress. I arise. Financially, I arise. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. I arrive. Not only me, my family will also arrive. Please sit down. And they arrived. How many of them arrived? All those who started. Not some. Let me use this to prophesy to someone. There will be no loss. When you started this journey, you started with your spiritual life. Your finances. Everything that started with you will also arrive. You will not leave your spiritual life in the boat. It will not fall by the wayside. Just because you want to make progress. Don't lose your spiritual life. Don't lose your finances. Don't lose your relationships. Don't lose your courage. Everything that started that journey should arrive also. It didn't say, and he arrived. And they. And my children arrived. And my company arrived. And ministry arrived. And my spiritual life arrived. Yes, I came from a family of idol worship, but I made up my mind to go to the other side. And, and on my way, for 10 years, I made captivity, but I still... Turn it into a prayer in one minute. The grace that makes a man arrive. In the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to be seated, but I'd like you to pray. I just felt that there, this is a place to declare. The grace, I arrive. I arrive. This one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind i press on to towards the mark of the high calling in christ i arrive i arrive i arrive i didn't start the journey to die in the sea i didn't start the journey to bow to storms i didn't start the journey ministry to bow to pressure I didn't start the journey to bow to status quo. I started intending to arrive. And until I see the other side, I am not yet there. There was a level of the anointing when I began my pursuit for God. You are praying. Hallelujah. Please look up. Hear me. Until you can see the other side, don't stop moving. I arrive does not mean... I stopped when I was tired. I arrived does not mean I stopped because time was going. I arrived means I finally saw physically what was in my spirit when I started. Are we learning? Please sit down. Let's finish up that scripture. I'm just walking you through these scriptures. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. Now, next verse <laughs> and when he went forth to the land there met him out of a city a certain man now you would think that when he was done with storms he would never meet any again as soon as he arrives the new level it was not the prime minister who came to greet him as soon as he arrived there it was a madman who stood there and the Bible says he had devils long time and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in tombs. My first question is who told the madman there were people coming from the other side? I, I can perceive a relationship between the storm and the demons in this man. That as soon as he arrives... He meets the madman who is also like the water and the wind. In this case, the man being the water, the wind being the spirits that had kept him bound for a long time. Follow the discourse. Next verse, please. And the Bible says, and when he saw Jesus, he cried out 
and fell before him and with a loud voice said what have you, what have i to do with thee jesus thou son of god most high i beseech thee torment me not 29 for he had commanded the unclean spirit you see the formula again not the man every time you see storms whether in human forms whether in whatever the approach is the spirit first jesus did not reply the man like he did not reply the man he did not reply the water he went straight to the wind the spirit component in that situation and the bible says he rebuked he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man then the bible gives us added information that for oft times it had caught him and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters and he broke the bands and was driven of them of the devils into the wilderness uh-huh and jesus asked him now that he was free saying okay he's giving us an information what is thy name and he said legion because many devils were entered into him watch this and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep 32 watch this it says and there was there a herd of many swine feeding where on the mountain leave that for another day and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter them and he suffered them the word suffer means permit and the bible says and when the devils went out of the man they entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and were choked and they that fed them saw what was done and fled and went and told it in the city and in the country read on then they went out to see what was done and came to jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed sitting at the feet of jesus clothed and in his so what kind of mind did he have before because the bible says that he was sitting in his right mind and they were afraid 36 they also which saw it told them by the means that he was possessed of the devil was healed the means that he was possessed of the devil was healed next verse i want to bring out a powerful lesson here now watch this then the whole multitude of the country of the gatherings round about besought him to depart from them for they were taken with great fear and he went up into the ship and returned back again 38 now the man of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him but jesus sent him away with an instruction what was the instruction 39 return to thy house and show how great things god had done unto thee and he went his way watch this and published throughout the whole city how great things jesus had done to him jesus said now that we've done this let's return back so why did they really start the journey all the storms to free one man who was equal to 10 cities now it's very interesting when you study scripture that many times you would see jesus preach in a large crusade then he would be with one person investing the same passion that means in the mind of jesus he looks at things from a destiny dimension that that one man was the evangelist anointed now from hindsight let's reverse the story 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 once upon a land called gadara once upon a time a land called gadara god intending to invade that land decided to invest his dream in a man and satan knowing that that man could save the city now turned that man he made he he started attacking the background of that man and eventually the evangelist that was anointed to save 10 cities was staying in tombs with no clothes are you getting it now jesus intending to save 
the gatherings had to inconvenience himself to move to the other side the spirits knowing that salvation was coming they did not see jesus they did not see the disciples they saw salvation coming not to the man to the city hold on do you notice that there were certain people that suffered as a result of that salvation that meant that they were prospering because of the bondage in the land the moment the spirit went out some people's businesses went down oh dear there were people who their prosperity was because there was no salvation in that land the economy was rising because the purposes of god were bound as soon as the man was released the spirit and those in allegiance to it went down no other person went down in that city and jesus intending to save a city could it be that the reason why jesus also has been intentional about your destiny is because as he looks at you he's not seeing you he's seen a 90 year old prayer that someone from your family prayed as a missionary and said oh god raise somebody from this family who will wipe the tears of everyone raise somebody from this region and jesus has come in honor to that prayer whenever you think it is about you look beyond you whenever you think the attack is about you look beyond you whenever you think the salvation is about you look beyond you every time god comes to you he comes to you because of the destinies connected to you every time satan comes to you he comes to you because of the destinies connected to you there are attacks that have no business happening to you if you were not connected to the kind of destiny you're connected to the attacks have nothing to do with you don't take them personal satan is fighting many people through you that's why the attack looks fierce if it was about you he would not waste his time on you he looked at you madam and he saw an evangelist he looked at you and he saw a prophet he looked at you and he saw a kingdom financier and he said instead of attacking one million people let's stop this woman from having a child let's stop this one from going forward Hallelujah. is someone learning now this is giving us spiritual intelligence as believers so that we can interpret things from the lens of the spirit from the lens of prophecy from the lens of destiny now you can rejoice in the office and they may not know why this woman who has been insulted by everybody why is it that the more they insult you the more you rejoice tell them i came to house on the rock and i heard a word by the spirit that corrected my understanding number one that storms happen to all men and storms are very verification systems that you are really going to the other side if you did not intend to grow you will not meet with the challenges even Jesus Jesus and his presence in the boat did not stop the manifestation of the storm it only stopped the dominion of the storm on the journey the next thing that I, that I taught you that you need to have at heart is the mind of Christ. There is a mentality that makes men rest in the midst of storms. Can I tell you this? The Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. It says, For thou art with me. That divine presence should be a consolation. Someone declare, say you are with me. Thou art with me thou art with me in the midst of the storm and then when jesus woke up the bible says he rebuked the wind and the storm was calm so the first way we address storms is to rebuke the wind next time go to your shop go to your mall go to your business go to your house you come back and you see your children bringing reports that are not consistent with the word of god just kicking and venting anger on the children will not solve the problem 
always remember jesus has taught you what to do with storms it is not the result it is not the school it is not the dull child. remember satan does not attack for nothing in that child ceo in that child is the employment of five thousand people don't blame the innocent child and bring ill speak ill spoken words over him you are a failure you are dull no satan does not attack failures If you were a Satan, you will not attack failures. That's a waste of time. The Bible says he knows his time is short. So if Satan can handpick people, out of 7 billion people, when he listed people, you were there. You need to verify what parameter he used. And I've already told you, John 10.10, 10, that he only comes when he finds out there is something worth stealing, something worth killing, and something worth destroying. So you can go back and dance in the midst of storms. And they ask you why. You say, number one, the storm has verified that I am valuable. Number two, the storm has verified that in me there are nations. It is better to forget your paddle than to forget Jesus in the boat. Because if it is to calm storms, you don't need skills. You need Jesus. You need skills to move. But there are times that your skills cannot continue the journey. You will need Jesus. There are times that whatever knowledge you have may not be able to continue with you. It is Jesus. And then remember that in your praise and your rest, there is prophecy that you will arrive. Oh, powerful scripture. And they... And they arrived and they arrived even if it's after 10 years they arrived <laughs> apostle have not gotten admission for the past five ten years i bring you a word of hope while you are talking about admission prophecy is already saying you arrived apostle as i'm speaking right now there is no place for me to stay I mean, this church just laughing, but the landlord is waiting for me at home right about now. I, I may not know what storms you will face, but I can tell you this. If Jesus is in the boat, rejoice. Look up. Let me teach you something. One plus one, mathematically, is two. Is that true? One plus one, demonically, is anything less than two. Because Satan does not add. One plus one plus Satan cannot be two. Even if it's not zero, it cannot be two. Because Satan does not add. One plus one plus Jesus is equal to the answer he puts there. The moment you add Jesus to the equation, the answer is no longer scientific. The answer is no longer economic. The answer is, is no longer mathematics. It is the answer he puts there. So he can take 10 years of delay plus 2 years of being raised by a single mom plus 15 years of unemployment plus Jesus and he can put 1 year of victory that is equal to 30 years Five years of a wayward life plus two years of limited understanding in church plus a job that may not give you so much plus your passion and fire for God then plus Jesus and you will be surprised to see what the answer will be. The answer will be the destiny of someone who started working hard from four years and you say this is not fair and he says Jesus not, does not only add he can supplement anything plus Jesus is the answer he puts there. Let me tell you something. We're wrapping up. There is a very interesting parable I wish I had the time to deal with in scripture. It was a parable about employment. The Bible says a vine owner 
was drawing people to get into his field have you read that that parable and he negotiated for a denary with certain people early in the morning is that true so their basis for going to the field was not because they loved the vine owner it was because they negotiated for a denary he took them to the field later on he saw some others and said why sittest thou idle they said no man employers and he said go they didn't negotiate they went because of love and honor to the man even at the 11th hour one hour to the close of work he still met another he said go at the end of it he paid those who came because they wanted payment then those who came because they believed him he said now let me decide how to pay you paid them the same amount and they said no there is injustice here and jesus said what is the injustice i know you came from a lineage of millionaires i know you came from a lineage of those who bless you and maybe that may be your motivation for loving jesus it was not really because you loved him it was because there was an opportunity you were told that if you stay with him he can bless you oh dear spiritual employee you go to the vineyard your dinner is coming but then there are others who said lord if you can make any sense out of this life my background has cheated me already and he said also come and join and when it is time for payment when he's allocating graces and possibilities he can bring the grace of one oh dear i'm saying this prophetically because there are people after this conference you will stand side by side with those who started being diligent even before you were born again and they will wonder and say but this is not fair and you will tell them the problem is not me the problem is the one who carried me along in his boat jesus christ being in your boat can make the difference and they arrived and they arrived and they arrived and he met the man at gadara rebuked the spirit out of that man and the man said i want to follow you back he said no i came because of you now that i'm done with you i can release you to live out your assignment now listen to me victory over storms has a purpose to it the purpose is that jesus be revealed and that jesus be glorified when the storms that have attempted to impede your progress are over let it not be that when you have built houses and cars and everything you say my power and the might of my hand has given me this he says but thou shall remember that means you can forget i brought a simple message but a powerful one tonight because everybody here under the sound of my voice if there is no storm before you now, I can tell you it is proof that you have not yet made a decision. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you